Greetings everyone. In this video, I'm going to be saving myself just a little bit of money by rebuilding a sticking brake caliper on my 1995 Pontiac Trans Am and I'll be showing you just how easy it is to do this yourself. So here is the situation that I'm stuck with today. This wheel should not take this much force to rotate. And if you listen closely as I rotate it, you can actually hear the disc and the pads squeaking as the wheel turns. That should not be happening. So let's go ahead and fix it. Per the use when working on brakes, uh, we've got to remove the wheel and tire. So I do have the vehicle safely and securely perched upon a couple jack stands and my jack just for backup. So you can see, definitely, it looks like there's been some dragging going for a little while. I should have addressed this sooner, I'm not gonna lie, but you know life, man. So now it's time to remove the brake hose uh, because I'm not gonna attempt to do this on the car. I think that would just make a huge mess. I'm gonna do it on the bench. Um, so let's go ahead and get this brake line off. I do have plenty of brake fluid in the master cylinder that whatever runs out of here hopefully won't let the master cylinder go dry and introduce a bunch of air into the system. If all goes to plan, I shouldn't really have to do anything when I'm done except bleed this one caliper. Of course, let me make sure I'm thinking backwards and I'm actually loosening the bolt. Yep, there we go. We're good. I should have used a bigger piece of cardboard. No big deal. I'll just throw some cat litter down. So now the brake hose is disconnected from the caliper and uh, with the, a little bit of fluid ran out, but with the master cylinder cap on, it really shouldn't drip a whole lot. So to remove the front caliper on this Firebird and a lot of other General Motor vehicles of this vintage, uh, you'll need basically one of these gigantic Allen uh, you know, there's a technical term for these and I cannot remember it off the top of my head. You need one of these things. It's like a giant Allen key. And there's a bolt, there are two bolts on the back of the caliper that go this way. And that should fit. So now, just knock those loose. And then there is one more down here as well. Knock that loose. And then turn on this for the next week or so, and eventually they'll come out. Should have used my cordless ratchet. What was I thinking? At this point, it's more effort to get up and go get that than it would be just to do this by hand, so that's what I'm going to do. By the way, I hope you appreciate this video. If you do, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe while you're at it. It's not easy being a guy my size and folding myself up into a pretzel to be out of the way of the camera and still be able to do this job. I don't think I really need yoga if I'm doing this. To show your appreciation, smash one of those buttons, maybe both. With the caliper bolts out of the way, it should just lift out of here. It's a little tight because of that sticking piston, but it'll come out. Ah, And there it is. So let's take it over to the workbench i.e. my rolling shop cart. To disassemble the caliper and force the piston outside of the caliper body, I'm gonna be using compressed air and applying air pressure through the hydraulic port on the back of the caliper where the brake hose was connected. Before I do that though, I wanna share some advice. I've removed the pads. I'm gonna get those completely off the bench so that they don't get possibly contaminated with brake fluid. And then also go ahead and try to pour as much fluid out of the port on the back as you can. Any fluid that's left in that, that cylinder is going to go potentially everywhere once that piston finally comes out. I just poured some of mine into my magnetic tray here and let me tell you what, all of that rust in the fluid, it's a really good sign. I can't wait to see what this looks like. I'm just kidding, it's not a good sign. So in order to keep this piston from just possibly flying out somewhere that I don't want it to go, um, I'm gonna take some wood blocks Thankfully, my other hobby is woodworking, so I've got plenty of those laying around. I'm gonna set those in there. It's gonna be about that long, so it shouldn't, shouldn't come flying out of here too fast. Ideally, I would recommend actually doing this the other way, something like this, so that uh, you know if the piston does kind of eject with some force, it'll not go towards your face or your camera. 
But for the sake of getting better video and letting you see what's actually happening here, I'm going to do it this way. Wish me luck. I'm going to take my air gun. It's going to be pretty important to have one with a rubber tip on it. That way you can kind of mash it in there and get a good seal. I would start with your air compressor set pretty low, like 20 PSI, maybe even 15. Don't go jamming like 100 PSI in here and, and trying to send this piston to space or through the wall into the living room. Start slow. Also, do not place your hand in between your uh, boards or anything, or a thumb, unless you don't mind sacrificing it. Keep your hands clear. Probably wear some safety goggles, those kinds of things. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so 20 PSI is not enough. So that kind of gives us an idea of how seized that piston actually is. So I went ahead and cranked my regulator up to about 120 PSI. No, I'm just kidding. I've got uh, about 30 PSI now. Let's see if that's enough. It's wanting to move. Now it's starting to creep out a little bit. And there we go. And that is why you don't want your thumb or your hand or anything in there. That would have sucked. I think it's safe to say that at least it's broken free now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the air pressure back down a little bit. It took close to like 50 PSI to get it to break free. So I'm gonna go back down to 20 and uh, see if I can get it to move the rest of the way now that it's broken free. There we go. Now it's moving real easy. Like, I mean, I'm barely pressing the trigger on this hair hose now, and at 20 PSI, it's coming out. Okay, that's it. You can see the seal blowed up around it, and it should be free now. Maybe. Is it actually free this time? Yes, it is. Okay. Let me wipe it off a little bit. Here is the caliper piston now free from the caliper body. It's what's going to do the work. The hydraulic fluid is going to come in here. It's going to press on this piston. It's gonna move it into the brake pad, squeeze on the caliper, and then it should retract just a hair after it's done that, and this is not doing that. I really expected to see this pitted up and rusted real bad. In fact, I bought a, uh, a new piston. I'm probably gonna use it anyway. I could probably clean this up, some steel wool, and, and polish it up a little bit. I'm not gonna bother though. The piston was only $6. It was really cheap, so that's gonna get a new piston going in it. And then in here is where the piston actually lives you've got a a main kind of a dust seal on the outside that's supposed to keep brake dust and water and kind of things from getting in there pull that out real quick it's pretty stuck i'll pull it out later uh, and then inside is also a a square seal and what we're going to do is replace those with new seals um, that's really all there is to rebuilding a brake caliper like if you take your core into the parts store they're going to just take this ship it out they're going to put new seals in it a new piston if necessary probably you know bead blast it so this is the the square seal this is what actually seals against the piston um, and it's what's going to keep the the hydraulic fluid on this side of the piston and allow the pressure to actually push the piston out and then also help it retract back into the caliper body so we're going to replace that that's the new one and then this is also the uh the new dust seal. So I'm gonna use a set of picks that I got from Harbor Freight to try to get the old seals out. Uh, highly recommend having you know, like a good set of picks on hand. These are only $1.79 or so, but I might try pulling it out by hand first and do it without ripping it. Looking at the new seal, the new outer seal, it looks like there's maybe a metal ring or a plastic reinforcement ring on the inside. It's real, real stiff. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to rip it out by hand. Maybe I'm supposed to go from the inside. And that doesn't make any sense. Is there like somewhere to get a tool started maybe? Nope. Well, oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that, that didn't help at all. Maybe it's just so crusty that I'm not going to be able to really free it that easily. It has to be some place to start some kind of tool or something. I'm sure not every car is going to be this difficult. You know, it's just, it's, it's an F body. It's by General Motors. Why would you not make something impossible to work on? Am I just not seeing something? You know, you'd think there'd be like maybe a little slot somewhere around the perimeter that you could get a tool in. And now I don't have a choice because I've torn this seal up and I bought a new one. I want to use my new seal. Well, silly me. I spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out a cautious plan to uh, 
remove this outer seal from the caliper body. And it turns out, best idea is just to get you a uh, worn out old flat tip, jam it in there right on the edge, take a block of wood or something and just beat on it. And sure enough, the little metal retaining ring started to kind of come loose. So now I should be able to just work my way around and uh, get this the rest of the way out, I hope. Ah, there we go. The next step is going to be getting this inner seal out, which should go a lot easier. There's no kind of fancy retainer ring or anything in there. It should just come out like that. I'm going to get some brake cleaner, kind of just rinse this out, get rid of all that rusty sludge down in the bottom. Hopefully I'll be right back. And I'm back. Basically, all I did was take the you know, can of brake cleaner, clean this out the best I could, try to get a lot of the schmutz out of there, and then uh, you know, kind of assisted with a Dollar Tree wire brush. By the way, I always try to pick these up when I'm in that store. You get a set of three, a brass, a stainless steel, and a nylon brush for a dollar, man. But basically, just went in there, tried to clean out the ridge where the inner seal uh, sits, make sure you know I got as much out of there as I could. There's a little bit of corrosion, unfortunately, that just didn't want to come out, but it's a lot better than it was. And then I also cleaned out this surface here where our outer seal is gonna sit. So now it's just gonna be a matter of putting everything back together. I've got my fresh piston here. I'm going to lubricate everything with brake fluid uh, dot three or four, depending on what you want to use. I mean, I tend to run dot four because it doesn't cost that much more than dot three and it's got a higher boiling temperature. I don't know if you know this, by the way, but um, brake fluid is bad for paint. So, you know, keep that in mind if you got fancy painted calipers like this. And then also, you know, anywhere that you get it on, on paint on your vehicle will tend to cause the paint to bubble. Now it should be a matter of just putting this one in here, which really shouldn't be that difficult at all. I did grab the new seal, right? I didn't grab my old one. No, no, old one's on the floor over there. We're good. So the key thing here is just to make sure that the seal is in there straight. It's not twisted or anything like that. That's pretty important. And then the order of putting in your outer seal and piston can vary. Sometimes it helps to slide the piston, you know, from the bottom and then seat it in the caliper and try to put it um, through that way uh, it might be better depending on the vehicle just to go ahead and slip it over you know the end that it's supposed to go on thing is here make sure you put your piston in the right way it's going to go in with the closed end first just you know so you know because your pads on this car are going to fit in this recess so that's pretty important make sure you're putting it in the right way if you're doing it on a different vehicle maybe take some pictures before you start and make sure that uh, you put it back together the right way. I'm trying to decide how I want to put this together. Do I want to put it like that and then try to force the piston through it? Nope. I think what I'm going to do is put it like this over the piston, get it seated into its ridge. You can see how it fits down on this ridge. It's going to get down in there. And I'm going to put some around the O-ring in here too. It shouldn't take a whole lot of force to get this to seat. If it does, I have a caliper tool to help. Should, in theory, just slide in. Since I've got the tool, I'm gonna try to use it. So this is a caliper tool. I just kind of put my hand up top and push. Now it's actually going in, so that's, that's nice. I've got that going for me. Right, so getting this situated back in takes a little bit of force, um, more than I expected. That just means it's a tight fit. And uh, the caliper tool seems to be helping. You know, this is normally what you would use to compress the piston when you're putting in new pads. Uh, and the system has fluid in it and you, know, you gotta compress the piston to fit the new pads in because they're thicker than the old ones. And anyway, it seems to be kind of helping a little bit to at least apply force more evenly, but it moved a little bit and then now it's not moving. So let me see. If I wasn't the weakest man alive, I could probably force this down by hand, but it's just so much easier to use the caliper tool. Uh, once you, you know, get it started enough to be able to use it, I can work it down there nice and slow and also good and straight. So 
That's what I'm doing. Welcome to Life Lessons with your host, Sean. Make sure you put the seal on the right way. It's got a chamfer cut on the inside, but not on the outside, uh, and also a slight taper. So, you know, when you push the piston all the way down and try to put the seal in there the wrong way, it won't go. See, aren't you glad you watched this video and I figured that out the hard way for you. You're welcome. So I'm on attempt number three of getting this outer seal in. Uh, I'm gonna try using some brake lubricant, some silicone based lubricant that's uh, safe for rubber seals and brake components. I'm gonna try using that to lubricate the outer part of the seal and get it to go in. Maybe even put a little bit like down in here where I know there's a difficult area. I think a lot of it's just the corrosion uh, around that bevel. Probably should have like steel wooled it or something or even sanded it a little bit, smooth it out. We'll try that on attempt number four if attempt number three doesn't work. Cause I don't wanna have to pull this piston completely back out again. And of course, everything's slippery now. Great. Okay, so it's in there. That's nice. Now, can we just get it to go in the rest of the way? Maybe if I started at the back and then work my way this way. Uh, I think I might maybe have it. Definitely not. Come on, go in your home. I could have bought a new caliper and painted it by now. I definitely think it's the corrosion that's causing the problem. Oh God, there we go. Maybe, yes, finally. A blunt quarter inch uh, driver seemed to help a lot there. Finally got the seal to seat using the quarter inch uh, driver to push on it. Not ideal, but it worked. Now it's ready to go back in the car and I'm ready for a break. Now that that nightmare is over with, thank God, I've got the caliper back on the car. Uh, just make sure you put your brake pads back in. Also torque everything back down. I'm sorry, torque everything back down to factory specs. Uh, make sure you use a torque wrench so that uh, everything's tight and won't come back apart. Uh, then last, all I gotta do is just reconnect this brake line and of course bleed the brakes. That's a very important step, just as important as the brake pads. If you skip that step, there's a good chance you're gonna run into something and it won't be pretty. And all of this will have been for nothing. In hindsight, this is something that you're gonna really have to decide if it's worth it to you to do or not. The savings isn't huge. I only saved about 30 or 40 bucks and if I wasn't filming this, it probably would have taken me an hour to accomplish. So, I mean, even then, that's not a bad return. That being said, it's a lot easier to just order a part and have it shipped to the house or just go to the parts store and pick up a new caliper. But a lot of times you're gonna have to deal with core charges and you'll either have to ship stuff back or make two trips to the store, which is also time that you could be spending doing something else. So take that into account as well. For me, I'm just that cheap. It was worth it for me to try it as well. It's not just the money with the painted calipers. I wanted them to match when I was done, even though they don't look that great anymore. I just wanted everything to match. And to top it all off, I get to enjoy the sense of accomplishment that comes with doing something yourself. And sometimes taking the hard way is just a little bit more fun. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit the like button. That'll let YouTube know that this is a decent video and we'll be more likely to recommend it to others. If you're into the DIY car thing, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I do videos like this, I do product reviews, and there might be other things out there in the future that you'll enjoy as well. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.